We'll get started here in just a few minutes um, we, with the fair in town. I want to make sure that if uh, Sherry Barber, we're waiting on one more commissioner, if she is able to attend, I want to give her opportunity to park. So everyone can kind of hang out for just a few minutes. We'll get started. All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the Planning Commission special meeting of uh, Wednesday, July 29th, 2015 to order. Would everyone please rise and state the Pledge of Allegiance with me? Now move into roll calls starting on my left. Austin here. Lever here. Lavella here. Mater here. Kimsey here. Barber here. Freeman here. Quorum is present. Moving into the consent agenda. All matters listed within the consent agenda have been distributed to each member of the Planning Commission for study. These items are considered to be routine and will be enacted upon by one motion with no separate discussion. If separate discussion is desired on an item, 
either from the Planning Commission or from the floor, that item may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda. Is there any item any member of the commission would like to have removed from the consent agenda? Any item any member of the public would like to have removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion made by Barber with a second by Freeman that we approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries with all in favor. Moving into new business item number one, Z-15-04. Hold a public hearing and consider rezoning approximately 2.67 acres from C2 General Commu Commercial District to M2 General Industrial District on property located at 30000 West 191st Street application submitted by Jeff Schinkel of BCS Design Incorporated on behalf of KMK Properties and Trek LLC property owner of record. Do we have a presentation from staff this evening? Good evening, uh, Chair, Planning Commissioners. I'm Chad Barr, uh, Planner One, to uh, give this uh, evening's uh, presentation on this case. Waiting for its appearance. There we go. I think we're, we're going there. Sorry for the delay. No worries. But as you stated, this is uh, item one, uh, case number Z15-04 on the evening. It's a request of rezoning of 2.67 acres from C2, which is General Commercial District, to M2 General... Uh, Chad? Some of us don't... Still a still a blank, uh, blank screen. Oh. oh. <coughs> Sorry. You need to turn the oh. monitor on. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Operator. Got it now. Okay. I'll begin, uh, begin uh, there with the request, the current uh, slide that's up. Uh, it's a request for a proposed rezoning of 2.67 acres from C2, which is the general commercial zoning district, to the M2, which is the general industrial district. The location is 30000, which is 30,000 West 191st Street, uh, Gardner, Kansas. The rezoning, if approved, would allow for the establishment of a truck freight terminal land use. On this particular slide, you'll see the location and notification map. Uh, this case is unique uh, in one sense that uh, where it's on the edge of town or near the edge of town, uh, by Kansas statute, uh, it invokes uh, two different notification rings or areas. As you see there on the, uh, the screen, uh, with the gold boundary is the normal 200 feet uh, notification area and then the red also indicates the 1,000 feet notification as required of unincorporated areas uh, which in this particular case added three additional notifications uh, for this case and then all of the landowners uh, that were notified are stated on this particular slide. The uh, city boundary is uh, designated with the, the dashed blue uh, line with Gardner being on the east side of that line and then uh, Johnson County unincorporated being on the west side. Moving on, this is a zoning map of the uh, area. Uh, you'll start uh, basically north of the subject property which is outlined in the center and then I'll go around in uh, a counter, excuse me, in a clockwise fashion. 
So you'll note the uh, agricultural zoning to the north of the subject parcel, and then directly to the east is uh, the C3 uh, type zoning. And then moving to, to the south uh, is more agricultural zoning, and then C2 zoning, which is the existing zoning on the west side. I've tried to also uh, identify the, the zoning types as found in Johnson County with the key there, the RUR is their rural district, which is kind of the county's, one of their agricultural zones, which is a 10 acre minimum for housing. And then the RLD, which is uh, residentially, residential low density with a three acre minimum for the type of zone. Moving on, this is an aerial photograph of the area with the subject property highlighted in red. You can see the development both on its west side and east side and 191st Street down at the bottom. Now a series of field uh, photos um, that shows the property and the area. This one is looking north, northeast towards the subject property, uh, identified with the red boundary. This one's looking east down 191st Street with the subject property being on the left and highlighted in red. This is looking uh, south-southwest across 191st Street um, towards the agricultural to the south there. And then this is looking west from 191st Street uh, from the road right away. And then the last photo is uh, looking north-northwest uh, from 191st Street um, at 30,070 West 191st Street, which would be the square specialties um, uh, development. Comments and or correspondence received during the processing of the case, there were none officially uh, of record, either through phone or email or letter or anything. Um, but I would put that there normally, uh, if that would be, you know, spelled out in detail. The next slide would tie to the first slide if we'd had either support or opposition, which we received none, so there's no indication of that on this particular slide. Staff findings on this case, uh, number one, the parcel was annexed into Gardner uh, on April the 17th, 2006. The parcel was rezoned to C2, its current zoning, uh, June 19th of 2006. The Sprayer Specialties final plat was recorded uh, December 6th of 2012. The Gardner Comprehensive Plan calls for light industrial and office uses for the application area. And the character of the area is a mixture of commercial, light industrial and agricultural land uses. Staff findings continued. Number six, the zoning request appears to be a suitable request for its location upon consideration of the 12 factors as laid out in the uh, Gardner Municipal Code, which is also the zoning ordinance. Number seven, the site plan case uh, number 15-02 is paired with this rezoning application and it is for a truck freight terminal land use but will not be heard at this date. It's not ready to be heard, uh, it will be heard at a future date. And so even though it's paired with it, you do not see it on the agenda tonight. And then number eight, just to kind of reiterate, it's the parcel is 2.67 acres in size and is lot number two of the Sprayer Specialty Subdivision. The rec recommendation of staff, staff recommends the Planning Commission forward the request to rezone 2.67 acres located at 30,000 West 191st Street and also known as Lot 2 of the Sprayer Specialty Subdivision Plat <coughs> C2 General Business District to M2 General Industrial District to the governing body with a recommendation for approval. That would conclude the presentation unless you have any questions for me. I think at this time we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Okay. John. So <coughs> anyone would like to comment on this item? Please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Individuals are allotted three minutes, or an individual representing a group is allotted seven minutes. Good evening. Good evening. My name's Mark Hanna. I'm an attorney. My uh, office is located in Olathe. I represent the Ann Radke Trust. It consists of about 65 acres immediately south of 191st Street. It goes over to Gardner Road and goes down to I-35. Uh, my comments probably would last more than three minutes, so I'm going to really zoom through them pretty quickly. I would first of all point out, I think, to what I would consider to be a really important factor is to ask yourselves why this property was zoned nine years ago as commercial property. I would suggest there was a reason for it. I would suggest there were factors in support of that commercial zoning, and those same factors still exist today. The, uh, I think it's important to note that 
as you read the staff's recommendation that on page four paragraph c talks about the commonality between the agricultural and industrial use concept and i, I think that the staff maybe forgot or maybe chose to forget to ignore the comparison of the commonality or the lack of commonality between an industrial and a commercial use i didn't see anything in the staff report that addressed whether there was a commonality between a commercial user and this kind of industrial user. And I think that's a very, very important consideration for the commission to consider here this evening. <clears throat> I think it's also important for the commission to consider here this evening that if you look at the surrounding properties, and we all know to the north that it's agricultural, but it's not gonna stay that way, that if you look at the other surrounding properties, including the far eastern portion of the 65 acre tract I represent, it's all commercial. I would suggest this is spot zone. I would suggest that this is an attempt to stick an industrial use in a commercial area. And as I'll get to here in a second, I would suggest that does not follow many of the points that are in your rezoning ordinance. The staff suggests that this property use that is being requested is suitable for the subject property. Well, I think we could debate that long and hard, but I would respectfully suggest that's just the opposite that an industrial use in a commercial area is not suitable. And in fact, as we go through the, the various provisions of the rezoning ordinance, I would suggest that there's in fact a, a real lack of suitability for this kind of a use uh, as compared to the surrounding commercial zoning uses. Without hesitation, the stamp report suggests unequivocally that, quote, this would not detrimentally affect the nearby properties, end quote nothing to back that up other than just the bold assertion by the staff to that case and once again I would respectfully suggest that if we take a two acre spot two and a half acre spot zoning request for industrial like this and set it smack dab in the middle of a very important overall commercially zoned area that it is absolutely going to detrimentally impact the nearby properties I have a request and that request would be, as you all roll this over tonight, ask yourself this simple question. If a, if a Hampton Inn or a Holiday Inn, for example, was interested in building a structure on my client's property, how compatible is that going to be across from a freight terminal? Is that the kind of use that a Hampton Inn or a Holiday Inn or a, a Best Buy or a large box retail store is that the kind of use you all want to see in that location? I would suggest absolutely not. I would suggest that this kind of use substantially harms the surrounding property values. Mr. Lockie's not here tonight. I've spoken with him. He owns a convenience store. He's indicated to me that he's likewise opposed. Staff indicates in their report that this M2 zoning, quote, would increase heavy truck traffic, end quote. Well, do we want to just go ahead and follow through with Edgerton's intermodal concept? Is that what we're looking for here? Staff even suggests, well, we can take care of that increased truck traffic by screening or landscaping. Now tell me, how is screening or landscaping going to mitigate the heavy truck traffic that this kind of use would generate? In conclusion, I would respectfully suggest that if the city really wants to have more industrial, intermodal, big warehouses, then probably you do want to go ahead and rezone this property to industrial. But if you have a vision and are willing to look down the road and realize that this is a huge gateway to the city of Gardner, you don't want this kind of use there. And for that reason, my client would respectfully request that you deny this rezoning. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nicholas Porto. I'm also an attorney. My office is at 1600 Baltimore Avenue in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. I'm here tonight on behalf of Marvin Vale, who owns the property located next door to the subject property. Mr. Vale's address is 29960 West 191st Street. Mr. Vale is also opposed to this request for um, entirely different reasons. Uh, by way of background, Mr. Vale operates a business known as Marvin's Toe out of the adjacent property. 
Mr. Vale also op operates a cargo container business out of a property located at 15607 South Keeler Street, which is located in Olathe, Kansas. The reason that Mr. Vale operates his cargo container facility out of a bit, out of a location in Olathe as opposed to his location in Gardner is because two years ago, Mr. Vale and I spoke with staff about Mr. Vale's request at that time to operate his cargo business in Gardner. At that time, Mr. Vale was told, per the Gardner City Code by staff, that because this, his property was not 20 acres, that there, wouldn't, there would never be an instance where he could operate his cargo container facility out of his business in Gardner. Therefore, Mr. Vale receiving that news moved to Olathe. Two years later, we're back here, and the applicant, Santa Fe Tow Service, is a direct competitor with Mr. Vale's tow service and with Mr. Vale's container business. As you can see from the application that has been submitted, the change of zoning is requested to allow a trucking terminal for the storage and moving of shipping containers. What is a shipping container? Well, the, the city code defines what a shipping container is, and it sounds a heck of a lot like a cargo container, which is, and I quote, an industrial standardized reusable vessel that is originally specifically and formally designed for the use in packing, shipping, and movement of freight. Shipping container and a cargo container are the exact same thing. Your city code tells us where cargo container facilities can be located and what they are. Specifically, section 18.010040, subchapter 22, states that cargo container facility means any site in which the principal or secondary use is the movement storage of cargo containers. The application does not reference cargo containers for a reason. They're trying to evade this because they know that the subject property is not 20 acres. That's why they're calling it a shipping container, not a cargo container. And I understand there's been tremendous turnover in staff at the city of Gardner, but I'm bewildered why there's been no discussion to tonight or in the report about the fact that this is actually a cargo container facility. For some reason, the staff has reached its conclusion completely oblivious to the law at issue here by determining that the proposed activity is a freight terminal. But in my discussions with staff, it seems obvious that there is at least a secondary use of the storage of cargo containers, therefore making this property completely uh, incompatible with the chosen use. Freight terminal, which is what the, the staff relies on um, for allowing this kind of use on the, in an M2 zone, on a, on a property less than 20 acres has no definition with the city in the city code. It's completely vague. I don't understand how legally why uh, the city would ignore <laughs> specifically defined laws in the city code and instead kind of hang their hat on this definition of freight terminal that has no definition. Especially when the fact that not even two years ago this the same discussion happened and, and staff reached an entirely inconsistent result. I don't understand staff's decision to ignore the specific criteria for those reasons, and uh, we would request that the city deny the application's request to change the zoning because it's inconsistent with the city's position. Thank you. Thank you. Any others wishing to speak this evening? How you doing? I'm Dennis Crownover. Uh, I, I farmed that property here even before Sprayer was here and before the tow lot was there. And the thing that I've got to question in my mind is you got commercial on this side, you got commercial on this side, you got 2.67 acres, I believe. Mercy. If we was talking about quarter sections here and a quarter section here, I could understand it. 2.67 for uh, industrial. I, I can't see it. That's, that's all I got to tell you. Great. Could you could you please state your address for the public record? 21225 Twin Creek Road, Gardner, Kansas. Great, thank you. Okay. Any others wishing to speak this evening? With that, I'd entertain a motion to close the public <coughs> hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made by Barbara with a second by Lavella that we close the public
public hearing. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Public hearing is now closed. All right, this is uh, Planning Commission discussion time. Any questions, comments for staff or others that have spoke this evening? I have one question regarding the, uh, the amount of space and how many, approximately how many cargo containers would possibly be able to be stored there. Has anybody done any, any kind of math for uh, what might be the, the maximum or typical capacity? Commissioner Weimer, you want to go, you want to go back there? Yeah, if you could, that would be great. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's a very good question, uh, Commissioner Weimer. Basically, if a person did a calculation on area, um, on the, uh, at least from the site plan that we've seen as staff or whatever, you could literally or cargo containers or trucks or whatever, you could probably put hundreds back there um, of that. One thing that I, I didn't mention in the earlier presentation is that during the pre-application conference with the applicant, uh, they mentioned that the, the majority or almost singularity use would be of actual the semi-trailers and trucks and that the cargo containers would be more of a minor and so we deem that as an accessory type use. Therefore, the, the uh, interpretation that we did to call it a freight freight truck terminal as opposed to let's say a cargo container like storage lot or something like that I don't know if that that helps or whatever but so they wouldn't be necessarily like stacking these containers up all within two and a half acres it'd be truck full like uh, tractor and trailers our, our understanding is that it would be um, if they would be present they would be minor uh, that the majority of the traffic the truck traffic would be of um, semi-trailer, the typical, which you'd see going up and down like the, the highway or interstate or something of that matter. If we approve the rezone and they began stacking storage trailers there, or cargo containers there beyond what was expected, is there any redress for that? Well, I believe the, uh, the zoning ordinance uh, states <coughs> that the, the use needs to be screened and then the fencing is like a maximum screen height for the fence would be eight feet. So since these are already actually taller than I think on norm more than eight feet, there would be no ability to stack them because um, they would be much taller than eight feet, which would be beyond any type of uh, screening that could be provided, let's say through fencing or something like that. How tall would they be? Uh, my understanding, they must, they must range um, in the eight to 12 feet of height. Um, perhaps somebody else in the room may have that exact number. But. So they'd be restricted to stacking no higher than the screen that's necessary. Yes. Because yes. one thing that's in the site plan is uh, the applicant had proposed um, uh, fence screening, cedar fence screening around the entire perimeter of the property, basically behind where the office building would be. There would be an office building. Uh, and then there also, through the zoning ordinance, there would be vegetative screening um, inside of that as well. Um, along the perimeter. So, so there would be two forms of screening, both um, solid fence and then vegetative screening uh, through the zoning ordinance. Through the M2 zoning, if, if it were to be approved, is it, um, well, I guess, is it accessible then for them to do any sort of storage in truck business? within that zoning without special permitting of any sort or are they basically allowed to do that within that certain zone um, or is there any, anything else special use or anything that they have to do beyond that to receive approval for it? Uh, Commissioner Freeman, um, basically the, the truck, what, the, what we see is where the, 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 the trucks would be coming in and out. They might be there overnight or something like that, changed around. Um, that that would be the main uh, use that would be permitted in the M2, thus the M2 request. It would not require a condition of use permit anymore to do that. Now, if the nature of the business changed over time, and let's say they wanted to do something with uh, an equal or a majority portion of cargo containers, then yeah, that would have to be re-examined and very well could um, do either the it would either not be allowed there because the ordinance says the parcel has to be at least 20 acres if it's going to be a cargo container like storage facility. Um, that, then that use, if that's what they desire there, wouldn't be allowed there. 
um, or if they wanted to do something different, we just have to look in light of the wording in the zoning ordinance to see if a conditional use permit would be applicable or not. Is there anything within the definitions that separate from container storage and container transfer? Is there anything that states if it's here for a certain amount of time, it's become a container storage system rather than a container transfer for, for trucking purposes? I'd have to consult. I'd have to consult it with. I don't want to just go off rote sure. memory there or whatever. If you allow me to do that, I could try to. We could try to answer that question. Well, I think I think it's actually a pretty valid question because if it does turn into if there is a definition there and it becomes container storage once it passes 48 hours, then I think what we heard before regarding you know, storage containers and cargo containers is pretty relevant because at the end of the day, I think they're probably pretty close to the same thing. The shipping container they go on the back of a truck. They're going to be eight to 10 by 20 feet or longer. I think they're probably going to be where you set them next to one another, you call them the same thing. So I think it's actually a pretty relevant issue and probably a definition that might be worthy of consideration to, to see what the limits are within the property. I, I would agree with that. I, let me let me go to the uh, ordinance consultant. Maybe I'll just read parts of it um, and that we're, therefore we'll have uh, a good current you know definition as, as seen in the zoning ordinance. Right. That would be acceptable. Because then if it, if it does become a place where, where cargo storage is going to take to be the definition after a set amount of time, and that is something that's going to be part of their business, then we are looking into what we heard earlier about the 20-acre minimum. That, that changes what the definition has to be. So I think that might be a fairly critical element to what we do before we even take any action. Okay, per the Gardner uh, Municipal uh, Code, which is the zoning ordinance, uh, it's definition number 22. I'll read what it says uh, for cargo container facilities. It says cargo container facilities mean any site in which the principal or secondary use is the movement, storage on a permanent or non-permanent basis, staging, redistribution, repair, or maintenance of more than two cargo containers and or chassis, but not to include, and then it goes into what is not included, A, B, and C. A, normal delivery of truck of, by truck of goods that are legally sold, stored, manufactured, harvested, or consumed on site, provided, and there's three caveats there, um, uh, lowercase letter uh, I, all deliveries occur in a loading or service area if designated. Uh, two, no cargo container is removed from a truck. And three, no truck is present on the site for more than 48 hours. And then going into B, where it's not, but not to include uh, B, railroad operations that are subject to jurisdiction of the U.S. Department of Transportation Service Transportation Board. And C, other uses of cargo containers specifically enumerated, permitted, and regulated by the zoning ordinance. Does that, does that help in any way, shape, or form? I think it does a little bit. And just from what we've heard today and what the plans are from a plan perspective, it, it, to me it almost sounds fairly clear that the secondary business in this place is going to be storage containers of some sort. Now, the definitions of what is a storage container and a, a cargo container may need, I mean, we may not have a clearly stated definition, but I don't think it's a very unfair assumption to see those in the connections that we heard earlier during the public comment portion. And then we're, we're looking at the acreage requirements, and maybe that is an appropriate use. Okay. Well, the ordinance does define uh, cargo container. It's right before, it's, it's item tw 21. I don't know if that's of any interest. Um, and it also does define chassis under item 25. I don't know if that's of any interest to the to the commission. I think what it would become of it would become of interest as soon as then it becomes a question of enforcement. I mean, if we we put that in place and we realize very quickly that they're meeting the threshold of what a cargo definition is, then who is it to go back and say that it's been uh, a, an incorrect use of the property and wouldn't have met the zoning standard? Right. And I'm afraid that we're setting up that scenario. That's all the questions I think I had. Okay. I didn't really have a question. I just had a comment. I think that I am uh, inclined to agree with the public speakers and that this is spot zoning. And I don't think the uh, <coughs> application, 
that's being used there is going to fit in that area anyway. I'm familiar with what a freight terminal is, and 2.67 acres probably isn't going to cut it. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, this is spot zoning, and we have turned this down before yeah. for things mm -hmm. less evasive than this, mm -hmm. actually. So that's just my comment about that. <clears throat> Other comments? Commissioners to my left? Okay, let's be quiet. Nothing? We don't have additional discussion or questions. I would entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion that we forward the request to rezone 2.67 acres located at 30,000 West 191st Street and AKA Lot 2 of the Sprayer Specialty Subdivision Plat from C2 General Business District to M2 General Industrial District to the governing body with a recommendation for denial. Second. I have a motion made by Barber with a second by Freeman that we for the request to rezone 2.67 acres located at 30,000 West 191st Street and AKA Lot 2 of the Sprayer Specialty Subdivision Plat from C2 General Business District to M2 General Industrial District to the governing body with a recommendation for denial. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries with all in favor. Moving on to New business item number two. We just so all the commissioners are aware, we have um, three separate actions here along with the public hearing. So I will go ahead and start with the item being 2A CVS Pharmacy located at the northwest corner of West Main Street and North Center Street. Application submitted by Matt Fogarty of Premier Civil Engineering and Valmere Companies, 102 West Main Street Trust, Kennedy and Company, LLC and Center Street LLC property owners of record. We'll start with item A being Z-15-06. Hold a public hearing and consider rezoning approximately 1.5 acres from R1 single family residential district, R5 apartment house district, C1 central business district to CP2 planned general business district and an associated preliminary development plan PDP-15-02 for a pharmacy use before we open the public hearing, does staff have a presentation to walk us through for item 2A first? Uh, yes, we do. Great. Yes, for uh, item 2A, which is the rezoning case, the uh, 15 uh, dash uh, zero 06 on the year. Uh, as you stated, it's a request uh, to rezone, uh, in this case, uh, to rezone a, uh, for a, asking for approval of a total of 1.55 acres separated into the following um, parcels, if you will. A half acre from C1, which is the central business district. The address is 102 West Main Street. Uh, 0.37 acres from <coughs> both the uh, R-5, the apartment house district, and the R-1 single family residential district, uh, which would be 116 West Main Street, and uh, 0.68 acres from R-5, again, the apartment house district, uh, for 113 West Sherman Street and 112 and 116 North Center Street, all to CP-2, which is the general business uh, planned commercial district. Uh, the location is the northwest corner of the intersection of West Main Street and North Center Street, Gardner, Kansas. The intent, the rezoning, if approved, would allow for the establishment of a retail pharmacy land use. This uh, slide shows the location and notification uh, map. As you'll see, the subject properties in the center highlighted with the uh, dark black uh, line. Uh, the interior parcels are designated with the blue lines. And then you'll see the notification area on this particular slide highlighted in red uh, and the parcels that were notified in the kind of a light blue or royal blue color. Moving on, this is the zoning map of the area. You can see the, uh, the three different types of zoning classifications of the subject properties. And likewise, form, I'll, as I did the last case, I'll start uh, to the north and go uh, in a clockwise fashion. 
You can see more of the R3, excuse me, R5 uh, zoning across Sh uh, Shawnee Street to the north. And you see a mixture of uh, C1 and RP-5, which is the planned uh, R5 version type of zoning to the east. Uh, to the south, you see C1 zoning and commercial plan-1 uh, zoning. To the southwest, C-1. And then uh, to the west, uh, you see an area of R-1, which is the low density uh, residential type zone. This is an aerial uh, photograph of the area with the zoning removed. Again, the uh, subject parcels are highlighted in, in this case with a uh, red line. Now a series of uh, photos, field photos. I think there's 10 in all. Uh, this is looking north, northeast towards the subject property across Main Street. This is looking east uh, down Main Street. Subject properties are on the left-hand side with the, designated by the red arrow. This is looking in the reverse direction, uh, looking west down Main Street, so therefore the subject properties are on the uh, right-hand side. This is looking south across Main Street from the uh, subject property. This is looking west from Center Street down the north side of Main Street. Subject property is there in the kind of the right central part of the photo. This is looking north, northwest from Center Street Road right away. Subject properties um, on the left hand side or kind of towards the top of the slide. This is looking west across Center Street. This be direct, directly at the subject properties. This is looking uh, west, northwest across Center Street at Shawnee Street. Subject properties on the left. This is looking back the other direction, looking northeast at Center Street from Shawnee Street. Uh, it's hard to see on the photo, but there is a crosswalk there. That's why I've included this. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, going across Center Street in this location, and then the fire hydrant as well on the corner. And then the last slide is looking east down Shawnee Street uh, with subject properties on the right. Uh, no correspondence or comments, uh, official ones, received during the processing of the case. Those would be indicated on this slide. Since there are none, we'll move on. Staff findings, all five parcels involved are not part of the original town of Gardner Platt of 1878. Number two, the Gardner uh, 2014 Comprehensive Plan calls for low density and medium uh, density residential land uses for the uh, subject properties. Number three, said plan on page 66 under the investment and redevelopment section lists specifically this area of town for redevelopment as commercial and to work with property owners and developers to identify opportunities to assemble lots to create sites for larger building footprints and on-site parking. Number four, uh, said plan on page 79 identifies both Main and Center Streets as arterial type streets with Maine as being a principal arterial, and as thus, development shall comply with city transportation standards. Number five, <coughs> excuse me, page 115 of the said plan identifies Gardner Road and then Center Street past Main Street moving to the north as a street straight, a streetscape corridor, thus meaning that this is a corridor that is unique in its location and traffic patterns and should be developed in an attractive way to augment the positive visibility of the city as a whole. Staff is recommending the Planning Commission forward the request to rezone the 1.55 acres, um, which I, I won't go through the specific uh, areas and addresses, but they're the same as we started with. Um, of all those different uh, addresses, all to the CP-2, the Plan General Business District, to the governing body with a recommendation for approval. That would conclude the uh, presentation on the zoning. Great. Okay. Thank you, Chad. I think we'll now um, go ahead and open the public hearing. If anyone would like to comment on this item, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Individuals are allotted three minutes, or an individual representing a group is allotted seven minutes. Do we have to open the public hearing? Oh. No. no. We no. just to close. Okay. But thanks for asking.
I'm Kip Wilnauer, 117 West Main. CBS wants to be in my front yard. And I'm all for progress, but not in my front yard. We just gave up some property so that we can have a good intersection, a good and working intersection. And it does work. As you saw by the pictures, there's lots of cars there. And now they're going to be backed up. They really are. You know, look at those pictures. Think of those pictures and think about the the direction in which people are going to get into the store and out of the store. Is there a better site anywhere in Gardner? Many other sites that are better. When we met with the gentleman that told us all that was going to happen, he also mentioned that the drive entrance was going to be on Center Street. Now I see it's at Shawnee, which is also housing, kids playing on it. And you've got lots of traffic now either getting in that way or slowing the traffic on Main Street. Um, and by their design, I really can't tell if they're going to have an entrance like Quick Trip, which I don't think I see here. You know, so it's just going to be right to that right, um, right, the right lane, and then stop, turn in. And so there we go. We're back to congestion. That's something we spent a lot of time and a lot of money on. So did the state, by the way. So I would hope that you deny this action. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any others wishing to speak this evening? I live uh, at what is called in this plan, uh, 113 West Sherman Street. I actually live at 113 West Shawnee Street. Um, I can't see you well, <laughs> so I'm on tiptoes. Um, what I hope is that the fact that I live on that property now um, doesn't sway your opinion about why I'm here. I came to awareness of this proposal because I live on an area that may be rezoned. And as I have tried to understand the larger picture of why that redevelopment might take that um, shape, I have become concerned about the staff's ability to align with the comprehensive plan that was adopted by the city in September. I think that the, um, the way that the project has been um, proceeding has um, deviated in many ways from that comprehensive plan. There are lots of places in the staff report that indicate that there are, you know, little exceptions made here and there. Um, and I would caution or hesitate if I were, I would use caution if I were going to, at this early in the game of that strategic comprehensive plan, begin to make exceptions. Um, my concerns, uh, are broader than just for my own family's relocation. Um, although I do want to emphasize the number of residents who would be impacted by this proposal. There are eight single unit, single bedroom units um, right behind my house. Um, and I interviewed those folks to see, you know, are they just going to be okay? Will they just relocate? No big deal. And um, Three of those residents are over 80. One of those residents is currently on disability and has survived cancer twice in the last five years. So, um, you know, um, one of those residents, one of those 80 plus residents is somebody who's worked and lived in Gardner since 1990. Um, and his wife worked and lived here at the group home on Shawnee Street. Um, she was a manager there. and I. I wonder what it says about our city if we um, relocate those people who really genuinely don't know what they'll, they don't have a plan, they don't know what they'll do. 
um, they don't have a backup plan. There isn't another piece of um, property for them to move into that, that they can find so far. Um, and I wonder what it means about our values if that's, oh, if that's just something that we write into our staff report and say like, oh, well, that's a bit of damage that um, we're comfortable with. Um, and what I'm, what I'm wanting to say is that the comprehensive plan dictates that we draft a streetscape policy to guide our decisions like this. And I'm not aware of that policy having been um, created and completed yet. And since this is such a highly visible and precedent-setting case, um, for, I, I mean, I believe that it's the first redevelopment that would occur in our area. I think that everything up to this point, um, especially on Main Street, has been development. I don't think we've seen redevelopment before. I could be wrong, but I've lived here since uh, 2003. I work in the public library. I'm not representing them here, but I do want to establish my commitment to this town. Um, I've provided story time there for eight years for our families. And so I'm really committed to the ideas that are laid out in the comprehensive plan. Um, you know, a pedestrian um, a friendly way of moving through our town. Um, I think when we look at cities like Old Overland Park, where they have redeveloped successfully in a way that um, seems to speak to our vision for our town, um, we, we might be able to find models for how to do this well. Um, and so the request that I'm making is not so much that you don't redevelop that area, but that this particular request be seen for kind of what it is, which is a piecemeal strategy that may or may not work to reinvigorate some of our economy, um, but that certainly hasn't been robustly, uh, you know, intentionally guided to create the vision that I think the comprehensive plan intends for Gardner, um, keeping in mind that that comprehensive plan was created with many, many minds, uh, you know, many stakeholders, people who are business owners, people who are citizens, um, uh, and many folks in between, public, uh, public employees too. Um, and so this proposal was created um, by a smaller group um, that doesn't represent, that doesn't show representation from those groups that I think are important stakeholders in, in this decision making. And um, so this is a question to answer with a, with a big strategy, with an intentional strategy, I think. And I believe that it's um, important enough to, um, to actually engage the citizens um, in by way of creating that streetscape policy. So in the staff report, it mentions that there is no adverse effect to the current Gardner property owners in the event that this proposal is denied. I think that the staff report makes it clear, um, even though it couches it in this, these terms of residential units rather than people, that there will be adverse effects for many people who live in Gardner um, if this proposal is not denied. And so seeing that, what I would re request is that um, this governing body or the, the governing body that this commission um, informs um, do that necessary robust streetscape planning and visioning so that retrofitting isn't necessary, so that we don't revisit this area many years down the road and say, oh, we should have, you know, adhered to our own uh, vision and values and policy. And that's the request that I make of you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any others wishing to speak this evening? Hi, I'm Jim Collier. I'm with the Velmere Companies. My address is 5757 West Maple, West Bloomfield, Michigan is the main office. Um, I'm here tonight to talk with, have my engineer with me and my traffic engineer here to talk about several things. Um, I have a rendering that was just completed. I don't believe you have in your possession of what the store would look like from the corner. And I'd like to pass that around. You want me to pass it around? <coughs> Oh, 
Some of the enhancements we've made on to the building um, is additional glass. We've raised the parapets so you won't see the rooftop units from the uh, from the street. Um, we've also made some adjustments to the uh, entrance and to the floor plan of this door so that it's more enhanced for pedestrians and motorists. Um, we have uh, made some landscaping adjustments and we've added walls and of course uh, per code we've added uh, screening fence screening uh, uh, to the west side of the property for uh, to screen off the residential units from from the commercial unit um, the other structures uh, uh, the dumpsters enclosures will be matching building materials and we'll have gates on them um, I'm going to turn this over to Matt Forgey who uh, can talk about the site plan a little bit, and then I'll turn it over to Madai for engineering questions. Okay, thank you. Good evening, my name is Matt Fogarty with Premier Civil Engineering. Address is 308 TCW Court, Lake St. Louis, Missouri, 63367. So that's on the St. Louis side of Cardinal Span, I'm sorry. Um, tonight uh, we're here because uh, uh, with the arguments that we've seen, I understand the concerns. We've been working with staff since last summer when this proposal initially came up. Uh, but the process that we go through with CVS is we get the city's initial take from staff level, take it back to CVS, state, we think this, we can make this plan work. And they give us the approval to move forward. That takes almost a year to go through. So we've been going through this quite a bit just to get to this process tonight. Um, here, we're here to show you a few items that why we've gotten where we are today. Um, Murdad Kvechi, the traffic engineer, can definitely discuss this turn lane on a main street. Uh, that is a KDOT street as well as the city's input. We have gone with the city's input. Um, initially, our plan was to have an access point on Center Street. We did not want it on Shawnee Street because it was a residential street. However, after working with staff, it was their opinion that it would be less likely to have an issue on Shawnee Street long term because of future planning with Center Street than actually having an access on Main Street, which would have been just north of the alley on Center Street that's across the street of Center so to the east. So that's how we came up with this entrance point. We're 100% willing to work to find a better spot if it does become that big of a problem. Now we've obviously gotten to this point. Secondly, uh, we are installing traffic homing devices. Uh, we're adding a median and a very large, not just a little speed bump, but a hump to make vehicles slow down. Um, Mr. Collier and I have walked the site today again as we have multiple times, and every time there was a little sign that one of the neighbors have out there that says, uh, children slow down and we see that as very important here so if there's anything additional that we need to do on that Shawnee Street access because of how staff wants to go with the entrance on Shawnee we're willing to work I, I mean the key is obviously uh, with uh, CBS or the direct competitors you got to have access and convenience you want to go there to get in and out and that's what CBS is there for um, Secondly, on the streetscape aspect, there's two things that we've tried to do to enhance this site. A, we have got some parking requirements that we've met, but secondly, with how a CBS layout works, it's either, if we do a streetscape layout, for example, we're into a situation where, what do you do with the drive through And that's a big problem. You want to put a drive through at the intersection, or can we try to pretty that up and push this site back? And with the site constraints that we're working with, 1.55, that's literally the minimal, minimal. We normally don't get under about an acre. This is, I've done one in St. Louis that had zero setbacks, and that was 1.45. So, 
So with this site, we're providing 15-foot landscape setbacks around. We're increasing the green space considerably. Now, from the tenant aspect, uh, obviously the leases, et cetera, that will have to be addressed with the owners of the property today. I mean, it's not CBS's intent, my intent, or the developer's intent to just throw somebody out. We've been in this scenario before where banks have owned properties because of the recession, and then of course these small business owners have problems. It, this is sort of the same situation. At the end of the day, our intent is to work with the community. This Gardner is not, we, I understand a lathe, a lot of people come to Gardner A because it's a large hub for working, and B, you're trying to get people into this city and to establish here as well with some of the businesses that are already established here, the larger businesses. So this is a good step forward into getting amenities into Gardner that work. So, and by providing a CVS long-term, they have healthcare clinics, they have um, the pharmacy component to where uh, the care mark side of things, it's really a broad spectrum of healthcare is what they're aiming for. That's why they changed the name to CVS Health. This is all for bettering items. And I'm, with what's out there today, by all means, with this redevelopment, it will truly increase this presence and our intent here is to work and try to provide as much buffering as possible with these residential to the north and to the west. Um, my other item I wanted to point out that I've been talking with Chad about, we've been trying to figure out the best way to screen Shawnee Street because per ordinance there's a six foot fence requirement and we do show this on the plan. However, I'd like to either be able to do a freestanding wall with columns or be a, a combination of the both with some shrubs to provide screening instead. Because if we start putting walls up, especially on the Shawnee Street side, we're gonna turn this into, you know, sort of, I don't wanna use the term a prison because it's obviously it's more open space, but you sort start getting that look. And we want this to be able to blend well to be able to do that. So with working with Chad, I wanted to give you that option as well tonight. And I, I think he did discuss about the deviations earlier <coughs> on a couple of items. And that is something that we are requesting as well. So 